In a recent broadcast of the conservative show Flashpoint, televangelist Kenneth Copeland told the host, Greg Stevens, that the school shooting epidemic that we've seen in the United States, especially over the past two decades, can be blamed entirely on the 1963 Supreme Court decision that removed mandatory Christian prayers from public schools. I didn't realize there was a worse response to school shootings than thoughts and prayers, but there you have it. When did the devil get a geographic assignment to kill children in schools? The devil used one atheist woman one, and her son, and Supreme Court people that didn't have the, what it took to stand up against her, and because of that one woman, today, we don't have Bibles in school. We can't pray in schools anymore. I know all of you know this already, but everything Copeland just uttered is pure bullshit. But because this particular right-wing talking point gets repeated all the time, I thought it would be helpful to point out the obvious errors. Copeland is referring to Abington School District v. Shemp, the 1963 Supreme Court decision that ended school-sponsored Bible readings in public schools. School-sponsored is an important distinction to make there because all it means is that Christianity cannot be treated like a school's official religion. Ellery Shemp, the oldest child, explains how it all started. In our English class, a group of uh, students have been meeting together and talking over issues of all varieties, religious issues, political issues. Uh, it became, there was sort of a consensus that uh, the Bible reading and, and the Lord's Prayer in the public schools uh, was not only undesirable, but in violation of the First Amendment of the Constitution. You can't read Bible verses over the loudspeaker to begin the school day as if everyone's just cool with that. And you can't pray to the Christian God as if a classroom is just like a church. Which makes sense, because people of all faiths and no faith attend public school, and it's absurd to pretend Christianity represents everybody. Wow. Copeland's Christianity doesn't even represent more progressive Christians. But that doesn't mean Christianity is banned in those places. Today, we don't have Bibles in school. We can't pray in schools anymore. Students who want to read the Bible in school on their own time are perfectly free to do so. And teachers who want to pray to Jesus during their break periods are perfectly free to do so. And teachers who want to reference the Bible for academic reasons, like dissecting a Bible verse for an English class, or discussing how the Garden of Eden is referenced in classic literature, are not going to face a lawsuit. Hell, they can even teach the Bible as literature, as an elective class, as long as it's done objectively. And because of that one woman, today, we don't have Bibles in school. On the flip side, it's not like atheism is the official religion of public schools either. Trust me on that. No teacher is demanding that kids say, there is no God. I promise you that God's Not Dead is not a documentary. God is dead. Later in the segment, Greg Stevens even suggests the teaching of evolution is to blame for violence because one particular shooter wore a shirt that read natural selection on it. Many of the school shooters have quoted the theory of evolution. One of the shooters in Colorado wore a t-shirt that said natural selection. But as anyone who actually understands evolution could tell you, natural selection or survival of the fittest isn't a justification for anything, much less murder. It's an explanation. It's a description. It's a way to make sense of what we're observing. To pretend otherwise is to admit you don't get the theory. Survival of the fittest isn't even a Darwin original. Anyway. No one has ever stopped Christians from praying in school, just as no one has ever banned the Bible in it. Conservatives who claim otherwise are either very ignorant or just lying to you. Honestly, in the case of Kenneth Copeland, it may be both. 
Blaming that 1963 decision for the school shooting problem makes as much sense as blaming the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which Honestly, I'm sure conservatives would love to do if they thought they could get away with it. The accusation doesn't even make sense, though. I have a list of all of the violence against schools in the history of the United States from the 1700s up till now. There was a drop in the 1980s, and then it spiked back up in the 90s, and then has continued to climb. There was no spike in school shootings in the decades following that Supreme Court decision. Not until Columbine, really, with the surveillance footage and wall-to-wall -wall coverage, did we start to see these horrific and all-too-frequent mass shootings by kids who just wanted to unleash their rage and had access to weapons to make it happen. That was 1999, by the way, more than three decades after the Prayer decision. Even if Copeland were right, how does he explain God's 36-year delay on getting revenge? There is no reason to believe that the lack of forced Christian prayer in schools, or while we're at it, mental illness or video games or social media, are to blame for a uniquely American problem. Other nations don't have forced Christianity in schools the way these conservative Christians want to have. They also struggle with mental illness and have access to video games and social media. And yet, mass shootings in other countries are incredibly rare. The common denominator in pretty much all the massacres we see in our country are the weapons. Often the same kind. Furthermore, even places overrun with prayer, like churches or a country music festival, are not immune from gun violence. Prayers do not stop bullets. Want to reduce mass shootings? Put more obstacles in the way for gun owners, especially people who want weapons that can kill several people in seconds. Raise the legal age to own a gun. Make owners go through a certain amount of training more than we have now. Register their weapons the way we register cars. Make sure smart technology only allows the owners of the guns to pull the trigger. Enforce red flag laws for people accused of domestic violence so they can't purchase weapons. There are many more possible ways to curb the problem, but conservatives are hell-bent on fighting every single one of them because they love semi-automatic weapons more than they care about children's safety. Dead kids are a price Republicans will gladly pay to continue their violent hobbies. Pro-life only matters until someone is born. For them, the NRA always takes precedence over the PTA. Forcing children to worship the same god as Kenneth Copeland will not solve a damn thing. If anything, it'll just create new problems. Telling non-Christian students they need to bow down to the Christian god or putting Ten Commandments posters in schools, or forcing schools to display In God We Trust, like they're currently doing in Texas, will not stop massacres, because God has nothing to do with the problem. And for churches all over this country <laughs> to go to their schools and cast that devil, draw a bloodline around those schools. Don't just lock the door. Lock the doors, pray God, lock the door. Elsewhere in the segment, by the way, Copeland also blames pornography, transgender people, and abortion for society's problems. Think about all the pornography that's gotten in our schools through school books. That's an assault on our children that'll kill them in the long run and try to change their gender. He's just grasping at straws, because the evidence is always against him. It's disgusting, really, to hear Copeland use serious tragedies like school shootings as a way to inject his personal religious views onto other people. It's not enough that he preaches nonsense to his followers. He wants to shove it in kids' faces, too. Hasn't he done enough damage to our society?